with you that hopefully we'll have a little bit of time to play with. And that's what I want to do is just give you a little bit of overview about um, how do you just start using Google Docs for yourselves. And I'll give you some examples of what I've done in my classroom. I teach seventh grade language arts in Pawcatuck, which is the Stonington School District. Um, <clears throat> I'm, my name's Tim Flanagan, by the way. And I am a student here at the Instructional Technology and Digital Media Literacy Program, uh, as several of you are. <laughs> You're all sitting on that side. Um, and um, <clears throat> so um, let's get started. And <clears throat> first of all, how many of you have used uh, Google Docs before? So I know some of you have, but a lot of you have not. Um, so we're going to start at the very beginning where it's just, you know, how do you get to Google Docs? And you may not realize it, but you're, if you have a Gmail account, um, if you have a Gmail address, then you already have a Google Docs account, whether you signed up for it or not. And the way to get to it is <clears throat> when you open up your Gmail, your Google Mail, and, and you do have to have some sort of Google account in order to access Google Docs. So some of you gave me email addresses that might not be Gmail, so I don't know if you'll get the document that I shared, but we'll figure it out. Um, and at the top of the page, when you open up your Gmail, you see all these things here. Well, Drive is how you get into the Google Docs. So if you click on Drive, um, Google Drive is just a place to store all of the information that you used to store on your um, computer hard drive, uh, all the documents that you create. And there are several parts to drive. And when you click on the red create button over here, it gives you options for what you want to create. You can create a document that's like a Microsoft Word document or <clears throat> a presentation which is like PowerPoint um, or a spreadsheet like Microsoft Excel. Um, forms are interesting. They're, um, I'm just trying to, starting to experiment with them, and those are really good for creating online quizzes for students, Google Forms, um, drawings, and, and other things that you can even add to this. But we're just going to focus on documents. If you know how to create and use a Google Doc, you can easily click on any of the other things here and use them the same way. Um, so before I create something, just so you know, this big long list of things, you know, when you first log into Google Drive, there might not be anything there. But this is where everything that you create or everything that's been shared with you on Google Drive or Google Docs will be. Um, <clears throat> you can organize it into folders, um, just like you would on a regular hard drive. And let me see. For example, I have a couple of folders here, but I need to do a lot more organizing. Um, so. If you click on the red Create button and you um, click on Document, it opens up a window. And students can use this um, for creating documents. So I teach language arts. Uh, my students do all of their writing pieces on Google Docs right now. So they create documents on Google Docs and type rough drafts. They edit. They revise. They even conference with peers and with me on Google Docs, which I'll show you in a minute. Yes? Do all your students have their own Gmail account? So yes. So that's the other piece to this. In order to use this with your students, your district has to set up, um, you know, like in my district, we have our stoningtonschools.org is our email address, but it's through Google Docs. So it's through Google so that every student has a Gmail address. The Gmail doesn't have to be activated. So in my district, they've decided not to activate the student Gmails. But they use their Gmail, which is just their first initial, I think it's their first initial last name, at stonington.org. And then they sign in. And they're given a password. And their password is their student number, uh, their student ID number. So your district, if you wanted to use this, would have to have a system set up like that. Unless you have students who have access to um, the internet outside of school and are online already, they could set up their own Gmail account for free. But then they would have to share their login information with you so that you would, you would have a way to communicate with them. Um, but the easiest way is if your district is already setting this up for you. So <clears throat> let's say you wanted to create a document. I always tell my students, and it's good for, you, for anybody, 
when you start a document, it says Untitled Document. So the first thing I have them do is you just simply click on the words Untitled Document and you get this box and then you can type in the title for the document. Um, and you hit OK and then they have a title. Um, so then they type there <coughs> um, whatever they're working on. And if you notice, uh, as students are typing, if you look at the top here, it says all changes saved in Drive. So um, Drive will automatically save. So the students will never lose their work. It won't disappear. Um, It'll, there'll be no more um, emailing back and forth to and from home and school or to the teacher to hand it in. Um, there'll be no more thumb drives to carry back and forth or to leave in their locker. Uh, it's all automatically saved right here. And it tells them right at the top, all changes automatically saved. So another quick thing I want to show you is when students are finished with an assignment, they have to know how to hand it in. And that's called sharing. <clears throat> so you have to tell your students what address they need to share it on. So you click on the blue share button in the top right corner. And these things at the top I don't use. This is for um, sharing the link to the document. Um, I use this part down here where you're inviting people. So it says right here, it says I am the owner of this document. And anyone that I add to this list um, will be um, automatically added. So let me see if there's an address that will come up. Which one? Oh, I think um, those scenes might have come in up. Yep. All right. So if I click, um, it says uh, there's a little box down here that says notify people via email, which I've done when I shared this document with you. Um, when my students are sharing with me, I ask them to uncheck that box because I don't need 90 emails from students telling me that they handed in their document or that they've, they've shared it with me. I can easily access and find out who has turned in their document or shared it with me uh, in other ways, which I can show you. But you don't need to have the email sent to you. And if it gets sent to you, just delete it. But um, So <clears throat> I have them uncheck that. Then you click Share and Save. Now. The thing about sharing, and students will run into this, and I'll tell you this because if you use this with your students, you'll notice, you know, eight hands going up at once saying, I, I couldn't log in. It didn't share. I know I saved it, but it's not here. All of those questions are going to come up, and you've got to start teaching students to problem solve. And I always tell them they've got other experts in the room. They can ask someone else who had that problem first, see if they can solve it for them. And usually it's a very quick, simple solution, like these little messages that come up when you Share. If, they, if you don't send an email message to the person, they, you get this little message. It looks like it's not working. But it's all it's saying is that you're not going to send them an email. Just be aware you're not sending them an email. And that's okay. Um, <clears throat> and it goes back to the screen. And we can see there's Racine, and it has been shared with her. There's also some settings for sharing. You can set it so that the person you're sharing it with uh, can edit it, can comment it, or can view it. Sometimes you might need to make them also the owner, which removes you as the owner. Uh, for example, when I have data um, that I'm sharing with my principal, when I'm done sharing that student data, I make the principal the owner of the data because I don't need to be the owner anymore. Um, so uh, there's different settings there Jim, to be can aware of. Can you pick one of those, or if you want someone to be able to comment and edit? Okay, so good question. We have if they can edit, that means that they can do everything. They can go in and edit, and they can comment and so obviously view it. Right, yeah. So if they can comment, they can comment and also view. And if they can view, that's the most limited. They can only view it and not make any changes. Students also, um, as you'll see, share with each other. They're not just sharing it with you. They're sharing it with each other. In my class, it's, we're using the writing process, so they are sharing with each other and commenting on each other's work. So it's a good idea when students are sharing with each other to just put on uh, can comment. Otherwise, you see students who are typing on other students' documents. Because if it says they can edit, that means they can actually go into the document and type on it and change it. 
delete, add, and, and do any changes. Somebody um, in the session I was in last Tuesday was talking about uh, a couple of middle school students that thought it was funny to go into another student's document and change the font to white. Mm. So that right, and it looks like it disappears. So <clears throat> right. It's middle school, and, the, and those things will happen, and they'll, you know, it'll happen, and you'll figure it out, and then you'll say, okay, class, what are we going to do about this? Let, how can we prevent this from happening again? And they'll tell you, well, let's make sure that, you know, we don't, we, we, we set it to can comment and not can edit. Um, so they'll problem solve, they'll figure those things out. Um, one other quick thing, I've mentioned comments, there's a there's a button up here for making comments, and I'm going to show you some examples of this, but I want to give you a chance to try it too. Um, and you click on comment. It's always changing. This looks different to me now, but it looks like there's two options. Uh, but you click on comment again. And when I'm looking at student work, I can make a comment right here. Uh, try one of the ideas for leads I taught in class. I want them to focus on something, um, and I hit comment. Um, and it's linked to, like, it's kind of highlighted wherever the cursor was where I made that comment, so it kind of gives them a reference point, like, this comment goes with that, that part that I was talking about. Because as you go along and students have a longer document, you might have a lot of comments over here. And like I said, students can comment on each other's work, too. Um, so I'm going kind of quick. Um, because I want to give you a chance to just try this out. And <clears throat> so I shared a document with you, and that document, um, let's see if I can get to it. Um, looks like this. On that document, it has my contact information. It also has a link to a, a tutorial that I created about using Google Docs in the classroom, and that was one of the assignments for one of our classes. So um, uh, it's a quick tutorial, five minute tutorial, kind of going over these things that we're talking about. So it might be a good reference point for you to go back to if you're really new at this. Um, but here you have some directions where I just want you to practice using Google Docs. So if you can access that document, if you can't find it, one good thing to do is look under the, the the whatever you call it, the menu that says uh, shared with me. On this left side, this is sort of like a menu of where things are in your drive. And the document that I'm sharing with you, you don't own, so it won't come up in your list of documents. But if you click on shared with me, it should be the top thing there because it's the most recent thing that's been shared with you. A few of you did not have a Gmail address, so you might need to look on with someone else, or if you want to just come up here and have me show you on here, we can, we can do some of that up here. Um, and if anybody uh, didn't receive it and you think you should have, let me know and I will. It did, good. Yeah. So if you didn't receive that document and you think you should have, tell me and I'll try sharing it again. So I just want you to go through the steps on that document. Just a quick five, ten minute creating a document, typing a quick thing, then we're going to talk a little bit more about how to use this in the classroom. Okay, and as you're working, ask me any questions you have, anything you need to know. Good, thanks. Yes. When I'm typing in there, oh, say that again. I'm not sure. Right. Yes, I'll get. Yes, I'll, I'm going to show you after we're done with this how I kind of organize work that's been shared with me so that you can, and how I check to see, has it been shared with me? So I'll, I will get that. And as far as pictures, though, none of my students have pictures on their accounts, so it just comes out as blank, but it has their, their name or their address. So I, I'm going to go over some steps for that. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was just, 
So, yeah, that's right. I forgot to mention. When you do this, since I shared this with you and I'm the owner, um, if you start editing that, um, everyone here is going to see what you're editing, and you're all going to try to edit the same document. So to make it, I should have shared it so that you couldn't edit it to avoid that problem, but I didn't. Um, and, um, but to make it work so that you have your own document, you go to File and make a copy, just like it says at the top, and you're going to be typing on the one that you make a copy of. Because then you, that copy that you make is your own document that you own and, and has not been shared with anybody. The one that I shared with you is one that everyone here can see. So I was just practicing like making mm-hmm. a document. Yeah. How, do, how do you delete it? Like, you, um, you have to go back to, um, let's see, where is your, um, yeah, I guess most visited, where that tab there, where it has your list of, no, that's not it. Um, yeah, if you go back to your regular Google Drive, I guess what you have to do is hit the back button. Usually it opens it up in a different tab so that you could go back and forth easily. So where is it? And that's it, practice. Oh, maybe under edit. It's different because it's on a tablet, but usually there's when you click on it, there's an option for just moving it to the trash or deleting it. If I go to the desktop, it might be back on, go back to where it's listed, let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, because usually what happens is there's a little checkbox next to it, yeah. and you check that checkbox and then hit trash. So I'm not sure. Oh, maybe? Open copy, no. Yeah, and it's because it's on the tablet that it's looking different, so I'm not quite sure. But. How you doing? Oh, good. Oh, so you're doing one this afternoon? Perfect. Oh, that's great. Good. I liked your tutorial. That was good. Okay, so... Um, did you already write on the document? No. I, am I supposed to write on my document? Oh, let's see. Um, yeah, you can just hit done on this. Okay. Um, oh, on so here. You may, okay, so on here, you just, um, you just follow these directions. So click on the file menu to make a copy. On the file? Yep. Okay. And you can just leave the title like that for now. Okay. You can always change it anytime. But uh, hit OK. Mm-hmm. So you can make the changes and then hit file. Is that what you would do? You can. Um, or now make this is just so that when you type on this, it's uh-huh. going to be just for you. It's not going to be something that's yeah. shared with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can control if who you want to share it with. Yeah. 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 So you're mm-hmm. correcting it here. Exactly. Yeah. And, Okay, yeah. after you make the copy, you correct it. Right, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. On the other way. Anyway, you make the copy. Right. You want to change yeah. it rather mm-hmm. than mess it up. Right, right. And then what do you do with this? So oh, I just left some directions of things for you to try yeah. out. Okay. So you already did click, click okay. you already did all that. Um, oh, I did say. And then this is just a little practice thing I'm having you type on the on this document. So you just try typing a response to one of those on the document, and then we're going to take a look at them and do some things. With them. Yes. I had to create an email account because of Gmail. Oh, okay. Where are we going? So what um, do you have the Gmail address? Did Did you already create one? Okay, I can share the document with you then. What's the address? Well, I need to share it with you, so I need your Gmail address. It's uh, P. Fleischmann, 
Wallingford PS. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah, that'd be better. Let's see. Um, Wait, that's not the right one. Um, this is it right here. So type it in right there. Um, let's see. Hit share and save, and you should get an email that, or you can just look on Google Docs, but you should get an email that has a link to open up this document. Do I have to go back um, to my Gmail? Yes. Yeah, right. right. And, then and then look in your email, your, uh, under the G, in your Gmail account. Thanks. <laughs> Are we on much? Are we, I think it ends at 25 after. Let me check. Yeah, 125. <laughs> Okay, so I want to give you a little bit more information. So we only have about 10 minutes left. And, um, you know, you can keep playing around with it, but I want to just share a few little tips. One is um, if you're going to use this with students and have all of your students uh, share documents with you, it can be a little bit overwhelming. You've got all this stuff coming in. Uh, so I give my students a system for naming their documents so that it's very easy for me to find something. Um, I have them put their um, letter, this isn't the word A, it's a, their class, their class letter is A. I have four classes and so this is the class, their last name, and then I tell them like a title for the assignment. Not, necess not necessarily the title that they're giving the piece, but just what the assignment was. So this was a narrative. So if I'm looking to see, did you know this student hand in their narrative, it's very easy for me to find in this list, because this is all in alphabetical order. Um, and this is also a good thing to share with students, because um, I can project this on the screen in my classroom on the day an assignment's due, and I can say, okay, see if your assignment's handed in, because this is what will happen. You will have a certain percentage of students come to you and say, I shared it with you, I shared it with you, I sh and it's just like before using Google Docs where they said, but I handed it in, I handed it in, and we've all had that happen, and you're saying, no, you didn't, I didn't get it. So, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> And the issue is 99% of the time is they really did share it with you, but they spelt your name wrong in the email address, or they 
did something else, you know, slightly wrong, one letter off, or they put a period where there wasn't a period, and that happens. So I just kind of keep this up and say, look, your work is turned in as long as it pops up on this screen during this class. If you don't see it, you know, that really, they really do check. They're like, oh, okay, let me check and see if it's there. Um, so having some sort of a naming system when you're working with a lot of st students is, is important. So just keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> yes. Mm -hmm. In terms of, I mean, I'm familiar with, I'm not familiar with how to organize. Can you change, like, uh, the way these are sorted by, and yes. sort, like, by date? Yes. Yes. So for example, um, if I'm checking, that's a good point, if, if I'm checking and I just want to see, like, I know we were working in class today on something, and I just click on this column that says last modified, it automatically sorts now. Um, it's also very cool to see who's been working um, at home. Like, if you give it as a homework assignment or if just students are going home to work, you can click on this where it says last modified and I don't have anything so recent up here, but if it was 80 students working on a document today, it would say, you know, John Smith at 1243 and Sally Jones at 1258. And so it tells you exactly when the students were working on the document. So that's kind of, uh, you know, just a little bit of information for you. But what about, say, is there a, a save, is there a sort by save date, like when it was saved, in other words? Well, since it's constantly saved and constantly, it's so the updating. Ones are be on top. Yeah, the newest <laughs> ones, right? Yeah, the most. This means that this isn't just um, when they were saved, shared with me. These dates are the last time that the students were working on the document. So you can see the very last moment that a student was actually had the document open and was working on it. Um, so another cool thing along with that that I really love about Google Docs um, is that you can see a revision history, a student's revision history. You can see what they were doing. If they were working on a piece for two weeks or three weeks, you can go back in time and see what it looked like. So in the old days, I used to collect um, you know, rough drafts and make comments on them and then have students go back and make revisions and editing. Sometimes I'd do another copy just for editing, and then in the end they'd be handing in three copies of a writing piece because I would want to compare and see, did they really use my comments? Did they really make some changes? Now that's all saved for me automatically. Not that I have time to look at every student's revision history every single time, but when you need to, when you're reading a piece and you're thinking, you know, I know I asked them to work on this introduction, let me look at the revision history and see what did they do with it. Um, and I just have a couple of screenshots to show you that, what that looks like. <clears throat> um, one thing that's a little, once you, you'll get used to it, but it's hard to find the revision history. It's hidden in this menu. It's under the File menu. So when you click on File, underneath it'll say See Revision History. And when you do that, this pops up. This is only a part of it. But you can see how um, it shows over time what was worked on. And when you click on one of those, in this screenshot I'm clicked on this one right here, it, this is what it will look like in another color will be any changes that the student made, including anything that they deleted. That's also there. Um, that's a good thing for telling students also just about um, the idea of leaving a good positive digital footprint and, and using the technology responsibly. I remind them that everything that they type here is recorded, even if they delete it. So if they're fooling around on the computer, or they walk by someone else's desk and type something inappropriate on their computer while they're you know, up at the pencil sharpener, which happens in middle school, um, things like that. It's all there. It's all there, and it's there forever. And I can see it. And I also remind them that these accounts, at least in my case, are school accounts. and they should be used for school purposes. They're just for school assignments and for things that, that I would assign for them and for interaction with me and that anything that goes on there are things that I will be seeing. Um, so they're not like chatting, messaging, Facebook-y types of, of things. Um, although they do have a chat feature on here too. And even though, <clears throat> even though the chat can be very helpful, sometimes that's a little bit annoying, but 
can be helpful, for example, if I'm up you know, here working with a student and I see two kids in the back fooling around, I can send them a little chat and say, get back to work. It pops up on their screen instantly, and then they're like, <laughs> yeah. um, but be careful with that. Well, the, either way, whether you hide it or not, the students will find this, and they will quickly start chatting with each other and get off task. It's just like talking in class. You know, they'll get, they'll get off task. So I also tell my students that don't forget, everything is saved. I can see it all. I'm kind of lying because the chat things do disappear. Once they log off, there's no record of the chats, as far as I know. Maybe there is somewhere out there in the internet world, but I have not been able to access that, but I don't tell them that. But if it gets very bad, I, I just put it up here, and you can see little icons of who's on a document. So if a student has shared the document with somebody else, you can see who else is looking at that document, and you can see who's chatting because the window will open up. So if I have a document that I've shared with students and kids are kind of chatting off task, I project the document on the screen and I say, the next chat I see up here, that person's losing 10 points and that <laughs> stops immediately. So there's ways to control all of that. It's just the newness of it, the kids are going to want to have fun with it, they're going to explore with it, and they're going to get off task with some of those things. But in the end, it's still a really useful tool. Yes? Where's the chat? The chat is, I think it's this little icon here. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Now, depending on if you're on a tablet, or an iPad, or a MacBook, or a Chromebook, whatever, sometimes these screens look a little bit different. You know, everything you need is there, but sometimes the screens do look a little bit different. Um, so that's revision history, and um, I would, if somebody did the, um, the little assignment that I gave you, uh, is there anybody who's willing to share what they typed with me so I can project it up here? Joe, could you do that? And because I just want to demonstrate something just here. Like two That's fine. Okay. We're not gonna we're not gonna evaluate it. We're okay. just gonna <laughs> use it as a way to demonstrate. Right. So, um, so uh, if you share it with, um, let me see. It's O T I M O. You got it. Okay. I've got to find my right account, though, because this is not the right account. Do you want to be the owner? Do you want to edit? Uh, can edit is fine. Okay. Um, um, I just need to get back into that right account because I was not on the right account. This one, Tim's presentation, yeah? Um, so <clears throat> just to show you, this is a document now that... Uh, Joe shared with me a dream, a teacher dream that he had. Um, I had a dream last night that I missed the bus going to school. And I was, I was always complaining that my sons were always missing the bus. And for some reason, they didn't have to go to school that day. And I was getting ready, and the bus went by. And I think it was all tied to this conference. I was worried about <laughs> oversleeping and missing the conference. But um, you can see. Like, there's Joe. He's on this document, yeah. and I have it open. And if you could start typing something here, Joe, just sure. anything at all. So I'm the teacher, and if he's shared this with me, I have my students share it with me even before they're finished, because then I can watch while they're working. And you can see a little um, cursor. I can see where he's typing and see what he's typing. And so it's kind of interesting. And so the first time I showed that the kids, they said, that was kind of creepy. And I said, well, it's really no different than me just walking around the room and looking, <laughs> looking over your shoulder and seeing what you're doing. Um, but it's another way to just let students know, you know, this is for the kind of work that I'm asking you to do in school. And it's serious work. And it's stuff that you should be comfortable with me seeing at all times. Um, so Tim, how would you manage a situation where, let's say, um Beth wanted to shoot, like you're in a classroom, and Joe put his up there. Now Beth wants to show you something and show it to the class, and then you want to show something. Is there, like, can they all share it with you, and then there's like a queuing? You know what I'm saying? I can only, can only show, show, as far as just one thing at a time, yeah. That's, but it's very handy, for example, when students are finished with the piece and they want to share it with the class. What I do is I just log into my account up on the projector, 
And since I have all their pieces, they just click on their piece and open it up and share it with the class that way. So they don't have to each have each student log into their account every time they come up. Um, so that's a quick introduction. Um, Roberta is going to do another uh, Google Doc uh, workshop, a little bit more advanced. And I'd say you're probably all ready for it. Um, and we only have, we don't really have any time, but I'm happy to answer questions for the next five minutes if anybody had questions. I was going to ask you how you think you would use it in your classrooms and whatnot, but feel free to ask me any questions. And thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.